If you were trapped in a pool with no way out and held prisoner against your will, what would you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the pool in 12 feet deep. This swimming pool is about to become a death trap. Getting ready for the holidays, the manager puts up a sign notifying everyone that the pool will be closed over the weekend and won't be open until next Monday. This woman Bree sits down on the bleachers and takes a device out of her purse to check her blood sugar levels. She's a diabetic, and if she doesn't get her medicine, she'll black out into a fatal coma. Jumping back into the water, Bree here is swimming laps when she spots her sister Jonah walking towards her. The woman climbs out, joining her by the poolside, and asks how she's doing. Her sister confirms she's been drug free for almost four months, but she looks depressed and wanting to cheer her up. Bree challenges her to a race. Taking her on, she jumps into the water, but that's when the manager walks up. He announces that the pool is closing for the holidays and tells them that they need to get out. Agreeing to leave, the women dry off at the bleachers, and Bree tells her sister she recently got engaged. She she wants to show her the ring, but when she searches her bag, it's nowhere to be found. Suddenly, Jonah here spots something at the bottom of the pool and walks over to get a closer look. It's the ring, but it's wedged in a metal grate. Acting quickly, Bree jumps into the water to retrieve it, trying to pull it loose, and her sister jumps in to help, but that was her biggest mistake. Above the water, the manager takes one last look around the poolside to make sure no one else is here and decides to close up shop, not realizing the women are still in the water. He presses a button and activates the drain sucking Jonah's hair into the grate. She's running out of oxygen and it's terrifying, but to make matters worse, the pool cover is closing overhead. Bree knows that they're both going to die if she doesn't do something, so she rips her sister's hair out with all her strength. Her plan works, and they swim up to the surface as fast as they can, but it's too late. The pool manager has already left the building, and the cover has fully extended over the pool, trapping them underneath. Okay, this is horrifying. If Jigsaw himself was suddenly the public pool manager, you should change your name and move to a different state. Even in retirement, this guy is still trapping people in terrifying situations, and if these girls had just seen one Saw movie in the last two decades, they would have known better. Now, there was clearly a better way to handle this situation if the girls were thinking straight. First of all, there's no reason for both of them to be at the bottom of the pool. An engagement ring is small, and there's only enough surface area for one person to be pulling on it at a time. Falling your sister down is just unnecessary, and it would have been more helpful to go tell the pool manager that she's lost a diamond ring. There's literally no downside to this, because with one girl in the pool, he wouldn't be able to close it down, and might also have the tools to help them retrieve it more easily. It's in this man's best interest to help them because he wants to leave, so the fact that neither of them thought to notify the staff is the stupidest decision they could possibly make. Unfortunately, it's too late for any of this, and we now have to escape an enclosed pool. Now, it just so happens that this was based on the real-life story of a teenager who tragically died in the same circumstance, and it tells us that this scenario is way more dangerous than it seems. If we look at our environment, we can see that this pool's on a slope with a 12-foot drop at the end, but on this side, it's only three and a half feet deep. The obvious decision is to stay in the shallow end of the pool because you won't need to keep swimming, but there's an even more important reason. If you look at how this cover closed, there don't appear to be any grooves along the side of the pool, which means that the cover isn't being pulled closed, it's being pushed. This tells us that the motor is only on the deep end, and the further away we are from the gearbox, the less resistance there's going to be when we push up on the cover. We also should take into account that on the edge, there are these metal hooks, and it's very likely that these fit into grooves on the other side to keep it locked in place. Now, the most logical thing to do is find weak spots in the cover, and if we know there will be strong resistance on this side and this side, the smartest course of action is to go to the middle and push up. Logically, this is where there is going to be the least amount of resistance, and even though it's slightly deeper, we can still touch the bottom of the pool. If it were me, I would try working together by having one one person go on the other's shoulders and push up with more combined force. All they need is to raise the cover by one foot to pull themselves out, and this would be their best chance. Panicking, the women start shouting for help, but they realize the place is completely empty and no one will be coming back until after the weekend. It's terrifying, and Jonah here starts hitting the pool cover to break out, but it's no use. The fiberglass is too strong to break, but that's when Bree comes up with a plan, suggesting they go to the shallow end and try lifting the cover from there instead. The sisters swim to the other side as fast as they can and push against the sheet, but even with both of them working together, it's still too heavy. There's no way they can lift it like this, and Bree suggests they check for any weak spots that they might be able to break through. Splitting up, they look around the pool, and the sister discovers a hole in the cover, but there's a problem. It's too small for them to reach their arm through, and they need something to widen it. Jonah finds the hook keeping the lane divider in place and tries to disconnect it, but it's stuck. Meanwhile, Bree discovers a plastic board tucked away in the side of the pool and breaks it in half. 
heading back to the hole. She tries to file down the sides to make it wider, but the plan doesn't work. Exhausted, the woman takes a break, but suddenly remembers her fiance, realizing he'll call the police when he notices she's missing, and all they have to do is wait for rescue. Hearing this, the sister becomes frustrated, pointing out that doing nothing is not a solution, but Bree here takes it personally. She confronts her sister for being negative, but Jonah tells her that she only ever thinks about herself. Ever since she came out of rehab, she's felt abandoned because her sister was never there to help her, and explains she's jealous at her perfect life and expensive diamond ring. That's when Bree realizes that her sister took the ring and threw it into the pool. This whole situation is her fault, and now they're going to die here. Angry, the woman swims down to the bottom where the grate is, and this time manages to pull the ring out. But this gives her an idea. She returns to find her sister trying to widen the hole, and tells her that the grate on the pool floor is slightly loose. If they work together to pull it off, they can use it to break the cover. Jonah is terrified that her hair is going to get sucked in again, and refuses to even try. But that's when they hear a phone ringing nearby. Okay, this is not the place for sibling rivalry. The longer they argue, the more time they waste without finding a solution, and staying in this pool is a lot more dangerous than you might realize. Eventually, these girls will need to release their bodily fluids, and even though it's a big pool, the problem is that the chemicals in urine bind with the chlorine, making extremely dangerous compounds called cyanogen chloride. This is a highly toxic chemical asphyxiant that interferes with the body's ability to use oxygen and can be rapidly fatal. Right now, the best strategy they have is to break the pool cover, and they need to put all of their focus on this instead of petty arguments. Using the metal grate is easily our best shot at escaping, because unlike the piece of plastic that they found, this thing is heavy and still has the sharp edges needed to concentrate all of our force into the smallest surface area. Now, it's important to realize that some composites of fiberglass can be anywhere from 6 to 10 times stronger than steel. In fact, it is so strong that it's even used in airplanes because of its lightweight material. As scary as that sounds, Bree's idea might still work, because as we can clearly see, there's an opening in the cover. That's a really important detail, because it means there's a structural weakness we can take advantage of, and all we really need to do is crack it. Now, the girls didn't realize this, but there's actually another way to break the fiberglass without the metal grate, and it has everything to do with this right here. These things keep the lane dividers in place, and are designed with a hook on each side so that they can be connected to the walls of the pool. Instead of trying to remove the hook from the divider, Jonah was yanking only on the wall hook itself. If I were her, I would have worked together with my sister to pull on the end of the pool divider and get more slack from the rope, disconnecting it from the wall. Then, I would have hooked a metal rod into the cover, put my feet on the fiberglass above me, and started pulling as hard as I could. This would weaken the material, and hopefully widen the hole for one of us to be pushed through. The women swim over to the side of the pool, and Bree realizes that it's her fiancé calling to ask where she is. Getting desperate, she swims back down to the bottom and starts pulling on the grate to try and break the fiberglass, but it's too heavy to lift. Help is only one call away, but there's nothing they can do to reach the phone. Hours later, the sisters are starting to lose hope. No one has come to save them, and it means Bree's fiancé hasn't realized that she's missing. That's when the lights suddenly shut off, and the phone starts ringing again. Jonah continues complaining about the situation, but notices how exhausted her sister looks. It's strange, and she asks Bree what's wrong with her. Reluctantly, the woman explains that she's diabetic and her blood sugar is getting low. If she doesn't get her insulin shot soon, she'll go into a coma and possibly die. Shocked, Jonah knows the situation is worse than she realized and promises her sister she'll do everything she can to get her the medication. They keep working on filing down the hole to widen it, and Jonah decides to ask her sister about the burns on her arm. She reveals that her skin is completely fried after an accident with her abusive father, and it destroyed her nerve nerve endings. It's horrific, and the sister tries to learn more about the incident when they hear a door open nearby. Someone's inside the building, and they rush over to find out who it is. Above the water, the janitor has finally finished her shift and is about to clock out when she hears Bree's phone ringing. Walking over to the bleachers, she finds the bag they left behind and is about to reach inside when the sisters start pounding on the pool cover. They scream for help, and the janitor is shocked to see them trapped underneath the sheet. They explain what happened, and the woman agrees to let them out, but she's about to make their lives so much worse. She takes out a wallet, stealing all the money inside, and realizes this is the perfect opportunity to get rich quick. Noticing a camera in the corner, the woman walks to the control room and turns them all off, making sure no one will know what she's about to do. Okay, this is bad. They don't know that the woman is untrustworthy, but the longer she takes to let them out, the more they should suspect something is wrong. Right now, this janitor is the best chance we have of escaping, so if it were me, I would let her know that we'll give her anything she wants just for the sister's insulin. This might seem counterintuitive, but if we start to feel like the janitor won't let us out, the girl's going to enter a diabetic coma and she'll drown. This will kill our chances to escape because two healthy sisters are more likely to find a way out than if one of them is either sick or dead. Now, regular insulin will last 
last anywhere from three to six hours, and a diabetic will need at least two shots per day. Assuming Brie took her first injection at 10 a.m., she would have to take her second at around 3 p.m. and a third at 11 o'clock. Considering how long they've been trapped, it wouldn't be surprising if she was already experiencing low blood sugar, which means getting that insulin is more important than anything else. In a situation like this, people will rarely choose to let someone die, and if we simply recognize that the janitor is trying to profit from the situation, we can negotiate a bribe for her to help us. The best way to do this is to create a yes ladder, where you phrase questions in certain ways that naturally let the other person answer in agreement, and it's a proven method of making them do what you want. With this in mind, I would first ask if she wants money. The woman will answer yes, and I would then tell her we have a diamond ring down here worth thousands of dollars. Considering how little cash there was in the wallet, she won't be able to resist an opportunity to walk away with a lot more money. Now, we have something she wants, which gives us more leverage than before, and since she would have already empathized enough to give us the insulin, she'll be more likely to strike a deal, letting us out of the pool in exchange for the diamond ring. As long as we insist that she open the pool first, it's our best chance at negotiating a fair trade, and once we're out, we can screw her over and call the cops. The janitor turns the lights back on and walks back to the pool, but instead of helping them out, she asks for their names. It's strange, and they ask if she's going to let them out soon, but the janitor ignores them, revealing she has their phone and needs their passcode to call for help. Jonah doesn't trust her, but with no other options, the sister decides to give her the code, and this was her biggest mistake. The janitor logs in and starts snooping through her things, playing the voicemails the fiancé has been sending all night long. It's cruel, but the woman explains that she's been down on her luck ever since she got out of jail, and will only let them go if Bree tells her her bank code. The sisters are horrified, and the janitor walks away to shut off the lights as they try to decide what they should do. Jonah suggests they wait a few more hours for someone else to come, but Bree reminds her that she needs her insulin shot, and she can't afford to take the chance. Pressuring the girls to make a decision, the janitor turns off the heater as well, and returns to the poolside, taunting the sisters that they're going to get a little chilly. Bree checks the pool jet, discovering that only cold water is being pumped through, and realizes that they're going to freeze to death if they don't give her what she wants. With their lives on the line, the woman offers up the code, and the janitor walks away with all her money, leaving them to suffer a slow and painful death. Later that night, the sisters begin feeling the effects of the cold, and Bree is shaking like crazy. They need to get out of here fast, and that's when Jonah remembers the filter grate on the bottom of the pool. She might be able to lift it up to break through the fiberglass, and goes to check it out. But as she swims to the bottom, the woman stops. She's terrified that she's going to get caught like she did earlier, and chickens out. Coming back up for air, she sees that Bree has just passed out, and rushes over to save her. To her relief, she wakes up, but they're still trapped here with no way out, and now they're running out of time. Jonah tries to follow down the hole again, but they need to find a better solution fast, or her sister is going to die. Okay, this girl is not thinking straight. Using the metal grate to break the fiberglass is still a good idea, but it's clearly too heavy for only one of them to lift, which means that both of these girls need to be at full strength if they want any chance for this to work. This is why it's so important to bargain with the janitor for the insulin and not for the phone. She's much more likely to help someone stay alive than help them escape, but the janitor doesn't know that if she gives them the insulin, the girls will be healthy enough to lift the metal grate together and start chipping away at the fiberglass. Now, the worst thing to do is to give this woman even more control by telling her the password to your phone. Giving her this information means she could send a text message to friends and family members telling them not to worry about us, making it less likely that someone will come to our rescue. If she's not going to open the cover, then she's not going to call for help either, and giving her their passcode was by far the stupidest thing they could do. If it becomes clear that negotiating with the janitor won't work, and she refuses to give us the insulin, there's still one more thing I would try to do, and that is to trap her here with us. At one point, the woman came close enough to look through the hole and decided to lay there. Now, we would definitely know if she was lying on the cover, because her shadow would be easily spotted from inside the pool. And even though this hole is not wide enough to reach your arm through, you could definitely reach your hand down. If it were me, I would grab a chunk of her hair and pull as much as I could down into the hole. If we can grip enough of it, she won't be able to yank herself free, and we won't let go unless she takes up the phone and calls the police. There's no downside for us here, because we're already stuck, and can literally play this game until we die. Aside from it being incredibly painful, the janitor won't be willing to wait that long, and the woman will have no choice but to eventually give in. Taking a moment to recover, Bree asks her sister about being in rehab, and the woman admits that she had been dealing with depression for years. Her past has been holding her back, and the sister reassures her that things will get better. With no other ideas, Joni here goes back to the hole to continue sawing it wider, but suddenly gets startled by the janitor. She's been keeping an eye on them for a while now, and has some bad news. There wasn't enough money in the bank account to satisfy her, and she's decided to keep them prisoner so they can't report her to the police. Upset 
upset. Jonah explains that her sister is going to die without help, but the janitor doesn't believe her. The woman is enjoying every second of this and walks away, refusing to save their lives. Bree realizes the how to find a way out on their own, but that's when Jonah grabs the broken piece of plastic and comes up with a brutal plan. Sharpening it against the wall, she swims over to the hole and starts to cry, attracting the janitor's attention. The woman walks over to investigate and Jonah tells her she has something she needs to confess, but doesn't want her sister to hear it. The woman puts her ear closer to the hole when suddenly she's stabbed with the plastic shard. The janitor backs away in agony, clutching her wound, and walks to the washroom to check the damage. The cut is too deep for her to stop the bleeding, and now she has every reason to make the sister's lives a living hell. Walking into the control room, she starts pressing buttons on this keypad, and the lights suddenly switch back on, but the sisters realize chlorine is being pumped back into the pool. They'll need to block the jets quickly or else they'll die from chemical poisoning and use their clothes to cover the outlets, but it's not working. The women are panicking, and Bree reaches her limit before passing out. Jonah has no choice but to hold her head above the water, doing her best to keep her alive, but it's a hopeless situation. Suddenly, Bree wakes up, and the women swim over to the hole, begging the janitor to spare their lives, but this time, the woman has a moment of compassion. She finally realizes they're going to die, and heads back to the control room to turn off the pool's filtration system, but she's not finished with her victims. Walking back to the pool, the janitor demands that Bree hands over her engagement ring if they want to be let out. It's their last bargaining chip, so the woman reluctantly passes it through the hole, but this was a huge mistake. The janitor suddenly changes her mind and tells them she won't let them out of here yet. It's extremely cruel and defeated. Bree swims away to mope. Okay, these girls ruined their chance. The janitor has been trying to rob them all night, but they had too little money to steal. It's the only reason this woman has stayed here for so long, because there's still one last thing that can make it worthwhile. This diamond ring was the one thing that had any value, but instead of striking a deal for the ring by letting them out first, they gave it away and then stabbed the woman in the ear. Now, this janitor has literally no reason to help them, and if anything, she will go out of her way to make them suffer even more. It's incredibly stupid, and the girls should have realized that money and empathy are the only tools they have at their disposal to give them even the slightest chance of getting this woman's help. Now, pumping chlorine into the pool might seem normal, but it's actually pretty dangerous because it creates something called hypochlorous acid. This forms when chlorine dissolves in water, and it's so good at killing germs and bacteria that even the World Health Organization recommended it as one of the most potent disinfectants available. This is what they're currently swimming in, and the longer the jets are on, the more it's pumping acid into the pool. The sodaless gas can cause severe symptoms if a person inhales too much, and it can even lead to death over long exposures. Now, as dangerous as this is, there's actually one more thing that could change the dynamic. Right now, the woman thinks she's holding all the cards. There's no way for the girls to get out unless she helps them, and it enables her to act as horrible as she wants. That's exactly why if it were me, instead of just banging on the fiberglass with my hands and begging for help, I would go down and get the metal grate, bring it to the surface, and start trying to wedge open a crack in the loosest side of the cover. Then I would use these metal hooks to widen the opening with leverage against the side of the pool. It's possible that it could be propped up against the ledge, and if this evil janitor sees that we're actually succeeding and getting ourselves out, it's very likely that she'll leave before we escape, so we can't identify her to the cops. The worst case scenario is that she'll try to sabotage our escape strategy, but that's okay. All we need to do is scare her that we're able to get out on our own, and even using the metal grate to bang against the cover is going to be threatening enough to convince her that it's in her own best interest to stop torturing us and leave. Exhausted, the woman tries to get some rest, but then she hears a loud noise in the distance. The pool cover is suddenly retracting, and a police siren begins to blare from outside. Rescue has finally arrived, and the door opens, revealing her fiancé standing there. He runs into the building and pulls her out of the water, relieved to see that she's still alive. The nightmare is finally over, but that's when he asks where her sister is, and she notices that Jonah is missing. Suddenly, Bree wakes up in the pool and realizes it was all just a dream. Meanwhile, the janitor is admiring the engagement ring and notices someone is calling again. It's the fiancé, and when she checks the new voicemails, she hears the man promise to call the cops if Bree doesn't reply. The women will be rescued if nobody answers the phone, so the janitor walks back to the pool and makes them a promise. She'll agree to open the cover, but only if they keep what happened here a secret. Desperate, the sisters agree, and she walks into the control room to retract the pool cover, but is surprised to find that it isn't working. The janitor heads back to the pool, telling the sisters that the machine is broken and there's no way she can help. They'll have to figure out how to escape on their own. Bree begs her to call the cops, but the woman makes it clear that she'll be sent back to jail if they come. The sisters promise not to mention anything, but the janitor leaves the building, destroying their last hope of being saved in time.
Okay, this is a serious problem. Earlier, Brie wasn't able to lift the metal grate on her own, so if they want a chance of pulling this to the surface, they'll have to work together. The problem is that this girl is going into diabetic shock, and they can't get her the insulin in time. They have no other options, and that means we need to stop her diabetic symptoms for long enough to help lift the drain. Now, surprisingly, there's a great way to do this, and it all comes down to exercise. It turns out that exercise can lower your blood sugar for an additional 24 hours because it makes you more sensitive to the insulin reserves you already have. Physical activity causes the body to demand glucose for energy, and as a result, the cells deliver glucose to the muscles, making blood sugar levels drop. There's even a way to tell if this can work for you, because if your blood sugar is above 240 milligrams per deciliter, your body will go through what's called ketosis, which is when you don't have enough carbohydrates to burn for energy. Instead, it burns fat and produces something called ketones, but what's interesting about it is that you can actually smell it on your breath. Some people describe keto breath as having a strong odor that's similar to nail polish remover. With this in mind, if we manage to catch a whiff of ketones on the sister's breath, then exercising would be a bad idea because it can actually make her blood sugar rise dangerously high. Now, if you look at when the sister is at her weakest, it's always when she's laying on the ropes, which is just going to make her feel even worse. If it were me, I would first check for symptoms of ketosis, then encourage her to push through the pain and start swimming laps. It won't be easy, but if we can get her heart pumping faster than normal, it will force her body to respond better to the insulin already in her system and stabilize her blood sugar for a little bit longer. If the theory is successful, she might feel well enough to make one final push and work with her sister to drag the metal grate up to the surface, using it for one last escape attempt. Later that night, Jonah swims around the pool to keep herself warm, but when the woman surfaces, she realizes she's lost sight of Bree. She spots her sister leaning against one of the lane dividers and wakes her up to make sure she's okay. Freezing to death, Bree tells her that she won't be able to get out if you're alive, and Jonah finally decides to face her fears, taking matters into her own hands. Swimming down to the bottom of the pool, she grabs a hold of the grate, pulling on it as hard as she can, but Jonah isn't strong enough to rip it out. Surfacing for air, the woman looks around for something to use for leverage, and realizes she knows exactly what will help. She swims back towards Bree, taking a piece of cloth from her, and dives back down for the grate. Tying it around the drain cover, the woman uses the cloth like a handle, and to her relief, she manages to dislodge it. With all of her strength, she pulls on the cloth one final time until the grate finally pops out. Jonah swims back to tell her sister that they might have a way out, but finds her unconscious on the surface of the water. They're so close to escaping, and she gives her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but Bree won't last any longer. With only one thing left to dry, Jonah desperately swims over to the hole, beating at it with the grate until she breaks through the fiberglass sheet. They finally have their exit. She drags her injured sister out of the pool, telling Bree that they're going to survive, but the woman won't respond. Her blood sugar has dropped so low that she's going into a diabetic coma, and Jonah quickly searches through her sister's purse for the insulin shot before jabbing it into the woman's leg. Emotional, she begs her to wake up, and for a split second, Bree opens her eyes. It's relieving to see, but suddenly, the woman looks up to find the janitor pointing a gun at her head. Shocked, Jonah asks why she's doing this, and the woman tells her she can't allow them to live. They've already seen her face, and she refuses to go back to prison. The woman walks towards them for the kill shot, but seeing how terrified they are, she's struck with sympathy and decides to put down the gun. Handing over the engagement ring, Jonah takes it and calls the cops, informing emergency services to help her sister as soon as possible. With freedom finally in her grasp, the woman tells the janitor to leave and never come back, thankful to still be alive. Later that night, Bree wakes up on a stretcher to find EMTs walking around the pool. She thanks Jonah for saving her life, and her sister reveals she has something to show her. Taking out the engagement ring, she hands it over to Bree and leans in for a hug, never admitting that she peed in the pool. But what do you think? How would you be 12 feet deep? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.